What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 rare invertebrates for aquariums. And for this list, I really had to dig deep and find some insane animals. So make sure you stay tuned, let's get right into it. The first invertebrate on this list is the common cuttlefish. Now this is a type of cephalopod and they are insanely smart. They're also really good at hunting because of their intelligence, and studies have shown that they can count and memorize numbers even better than human babies can, which is pretty astounding to think that you could be interacting with an animal like this in a home aquarium. Cuttlefish can also mimic the shape, color, and texture of their surroundings, and I saw a video of one actually blending in with a living room, which was so amazing to see, and it really shows how insane their evolution is to take them to the point where they can blend in with something that's just completely not in their environment in the wild. Another really funny and crazy thing about them is that the male cuttlefish, when they're trying to get a mate, will basically disguise themselves as females and become these beta male cuttlefish, where they get the female cuttlefish to come around them and school with them as if they're other females, and then they flip the script and impregnate the females. I guess the friend zone really does work when you're a cuttlefish. And if you guys ever wanted to keep one, they're not that expensive, they're about 40 to $70, but you would need like a 200 gallon tank because anything smaller than that would be torture for them. They are very smart creatures, they need a big tank, and they only live two years, so it's up to you guys. The next invertebrate I have on the list is the Chambered Nautilus. This is also a personal favorite of mine. It's another cephalopod, and it's actually the only cephalopod that grows an external shell, and so that gives them protection from other animals, and they are 265 million years old. That means they've literally been around before the dinosaurs, so they don't have that good eyesight, and they are not as smart as cuttlefish. They mostly rely on their sense of smell and their opportunistic predators, so they'll go after things like molts of lobsters, dying animals, but they'll also hunt stuff like krill and small shrimp. And they use jet propulsion to move around in the water, which is really crazy because when you see them take off, they can really take off a lot faster than you would think they could be able to. At full length, they get about 8 inches, so I would recommend more than a 200 gallon aquarium if you were going to keep one of these. But one really interesting thing about them is that you are able to breed them in captivity. I know my local aquarium actually just had babies of them, and it was really interesting to watch the babies hatch because they do hatch from eggs. Uh, as far as price goes, I'm not sure because I've only seen them in an aquarium store once and they only had one of them and I think it was probably about $500 so it would be very expensive and there's nowhere on the internet that sells them wholesale to buy them right now. The next invertebrate is the blue nudibranch or the blue glaucus and this thing is, I mean, it's a stunner. Let's be real, there's probably nothing else in the animal kingdom that can compare to the beauty that this slug has. I mean, it's a sea slug, and it literally looks like a phoenix. I mean, it, there's no other way to describe it. Uh, not only that, though, they eat Portuguese man o war, another really poisonous jellyfish. I actually got stung by a Portuguese man o war when I was a kid, so I hate them a lot, and I'm very happy that there are stuff like blue nudibranch in the waters to eat those deadly sons of bitches. Now, they can also be poisonous because when the blue glaucus eats the actual jellyfish, it can take that poison and concentrate it inside it, and then when you actually touch it, it can become even more poisonous than the jellyfish was to begin with. But, they are only 3 centimeters long, so they should be pretty easy to avoid, and I know there's only a few aquariums in the world that actually have these, so if you could get your hands on one and really take it home, you should probably post some videos on YouTube, because I bet you can go viral. The next invertebrate on the list is the Hemisquilla californius, and this is a type of mantis shrimp. It's also known as the California mantis shrimp. You guys know I have a mantis shrimp. Mine is the peacock mantis shrimp, the most beautiful mantis shrimp in the world. You can click that link above if you want to see more of him. But the California mantis shrimp is actually pretty insane too. 
These guys are the biggest mantis shrimp on the world. They grow to over a foot long and they're a primitive type of smashing mantis shrimp. So they do punch their prey and unlike a lot of other smashing mantis shrimp where they only go for small crustaceans, these guys will eat stuff like an octopus. Like they will literally fling themselves from their burrow, which is another thing that makes them unique. They are a smashing mantis that uses a burrow instead of rocks. Uh, usually the spearing mantis shrimp will use a burrow and the smashing mantis shrimp will be in reef or rock. But these guys will be in their burrow, they'll pop out and they will attack with that power and they can really kill just about anything. But if you want to keep them in an aquarium, they are cold water tolerant so you can get it pretty cold, you don't really need a heater and you need a deep substrate bed so they can actually burrow in it. I would recommend a 55 gallon because it gives you a lot of space to get that substrate bed. And you would also be one of the only people to have one of these species of mantis shrimp, which would make you pretty different. I mean, you would have a, a very unique aquarium and you could feed them a lot of stuff that you don't get to feed normal mantis shrimp either. The next invertebrate on the list is the Caribbean reef squid. Now, these are another favorite of mine, but that is because I always go snorkeling whenever I go to the Florida Keys, and I see these guys at the reef all the time. You can almost not see them when the light hits them in the right way, but they can change colors as well, so they can really make themselves seen or not seen based on what they want to do. They travel in packs, and they get about 7 to 8 inches long. So if you're going to keep one in an aquarium, I'd say 200 gallons. So you could keep maybe three of them at once because you don't want to keep them alone. Uh, they can also feed on mollusks and small fish. So it'd be fun to do live feedings and stuff like that. I mean, who wouldn't want to have a uh, squid in their aquarium? I mean, it's a pretty cool thing to have. Not many other people have it. And I do believe there are some places you can get them online. The next invertebrate is the octopus vulgaris. This is a kind of octopus that's pretty common in the wild, but it is uncommon to find them in the aquarium hobby because they get pretty big and they're also the smartest creatures you can possibly put in an aquarium. I've heard stories about octopus that would sneak out at night, open their tank in aquariums, go to the other aquariums where fish would be, and actually eat those fish and end up back in their same aquarium by the end of the night so that no one would know in the morning and they would just be like whoa where did the fish go well the octopus was eating them the whole time yeah these guys are insane hunters they have really good vision they're very smart and they have a very good memory so you could probably teach them to do a lot of stuff you've probably seen people do tricks with their octopus yes you can totally do stuff like that the only thing i ask is if you want to keep one of these in an aquarium Make sure you have a very, very, very big system because they do need a lot of space and a lot of things in their aquarium to keep them active and happy. If you ever wanted to buy one, I think you can get one for about $100, maybe even a little cheaper, but you got to pay a lot for shipping because if they ink in the bag, they will die. The next invertebrate is a bit of a wild one. It's called the giant isopod. And these things basically look like huge roly polies, except for they live underwater. They're actually massive though. They get between one and two and a half feet long. And they're scavengers and carnivores that can go an insane time without eating. I know they have a touch tank at an aquarium with these guys and they can actually bite the shit out of you. They have a really strong bite because they feed on stuff like dead whale carcasses and just dead stuff in the ocean that takes a big strong bite to really get into. One other crazy thing about them is that they can go up to five years without eating. But when they do eat, they gorge themselves. I mean, they can eat an insane amount. And if you want to keep these in an aquarium, you're going to have to find them. I know Catch Em All Fishing actually found one of these guys and kept him as a pet. That was a hilarious video. And if I lived in Florida and found one of these, I'd probably do the same. Next up is the flamboyant cuttlefish. Yes, you heard that right. The flamboyant cuttlefish. These are a type of cuttlefish that's very small. They only get about 2 to 3 inches. And if I could have an aquarium with these guys, I'd probably keep them in a 55 gallon if I had one. Or I'd get a 125 and keep them in a small group. They're a micro predator, so that means they feed on small crustaceans and fish. And they do hunt them actively. 
Uh, the flamboyant cuttlefish is actually toxic, and they're the only cuttlefish that is toxic to humans. You can find them in Indonesia and Papua New Guinea, and they're found in the, also the Indian Ocean. Uh, I know they are sold online, but they're extremely expensive. I believe they're $500 and up, but I might be wrong. They might even be more than that. The next invertebrate on the list is the pom-pom crab or the boxer crab. This is a saltwater crab, and they're very cute. They look a little bit like Harley Quinn shrimp in their pattering. And they have a symbolic relationship with anemones, which makes them really interesting because they basically hold these anemones on their hands at all times and they'll use them to sting other predators and to warn off other predators that they can sting them. And they can also feed that anemone when they're holding it open and they'll share the food with the anemone. And when they decide to molt, they'll put that anemone on their back and they'll bolt their shell and then they'll pick them up right after. And it's a really cool thing to watch. Not only that though, they're pretty easy to keep in aquariums because of their size. And I'm pretty sure you can find one on the internet for around $25 to $30. Uh, they are pretty rare though and that's the only thing. So if you can find a website that has them, you would be able to keep these in a reef tank or something like that. The last invertebrate on today's list is the paper nautilus. Now, these are even crazier than the normal nautilus. They're also cephalopods, but the one insane thing about these is that only one has ever been kept successfully in an aquarium. You're looking at a video of it right now. This thing is absolutely alien-like. It's like literally an octopus in a shell, and their shells are not hard and dense like the other ones. That Just like their name says, they are paper almost, and their lifespan is only about a year. So if you were ever to keep one of these, it would not be for long. A funny thing about them also is that the males are only an inch long and the females are over 15 inches. It's unlikely that you'll ever get the chance to keep one in an aquarium, but if you did, you would need about a thousand gallon system to keep the water maintained well enough for them to live. Alright guys, that's it for today's list. If you liked that video, make sure to check out some of the other content I have. I have some really crazy stuff on this channel, and I did change my YouTube name just slightly, so I hope you guys like that, and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks so much for the support. I'm out.